Hi everyone, this is uh, lecture 9, abbreviation used in prescription. So by end of this chapter, all of you should be able to um, un understand and to apply the Latin abbreviation in pharmacy practice. Number two, to interpret the pharmacy and medical jargon. Number three, to use the TLA effectively. Number four, to apply the calculations. Huh? So after today's, uh, this lecture 9 lecture, so all of you, Okay, kamu akan uh, dapat translate menterjemahkan prescription daripada doktor kepada instruction untuk patient. So this is actually the main aim and objective of this chapter. Huh? So first of all, uh, we must be able to understand abbreviation. Huh? So abbreviation by definition sebenarnya dia adalah singkatan. Okay, singkatan. So dalam prescription, kita akan menggunakan banyak singkatan untuk uh, menjimatkan masa uh, dalam uh, writing the prescription ataupun untuk menterjemahkan itu prescription. So we we'll need to know a lot of different types of symbols and also their punya abbreviations. So by knowing how to interpret all this in order to select the correct medicine, so we need to check the dose and also to translate the direction into something that the patient will understand. So I'm sure um, all of you have received uh, a label of drugs before. Okay, dalam kita punya label, kita ada instruction untuk patient. Jadi, itu instruction ataupun arahan daripada doktor, itu akan kita menerjemahkan kepada supaya patient-patient kita akan memahami apakah instruction ataupun arahan daripada doktor. So once you have confirmed the correct name and contact information for the patient, we need to determine the drug name. So sebaik saja kamu sudah mendapati, okay, ini kita punya patient name, itu dia punya contact detail. So now we will move on to the list of the medications. Sudah. List of medication dalam kita punya prescription, surat doctor. So at times kita punya doctor ataupun prescriber, okay, prescriber adalah doctor, dia akan menggunakan singkatan untuk sesetengah nama-nama ubat. So certain singkatan ataupun abbreviation you include things okay, that maybe you know contohnya electrolytes uh, kita guna KCL untuk potassium chloride ataupun NaCl untuk uh, sodium chloride. So sometimes all this kan macam common sense juga kita boleh google ataupun kita telah belajar dalam chemistry. So on top of that, this illustrates certain type of uh, abbreviation that you might encounter next time when you are working in hospital lah. Okay, so contohnya kita ada 3TC which stands for Lamiludine, uh, 5 fluorouracil 5-FU, APAP stands for Acetaminophen ataupun ini sebenarnya kita punya nama untuk para setamol juga. Uh, ASA untuk aspirin. Uh, mungkin saya akan highlight beberapa ubat yang kamu akan nampak lain kali. Ya. So let's say if you have a D5 ataupun half normal strength of the normal cell line. So ini adalah D5 half and S. D5W ini stands for dextrose 5% gula. Okay, it's actually gula dalam bentuk carbohydrate. Yeah? So 5% dextrose in water. Uh, this EES juga, sometimes you will see that in the clinic where it refers to erythromycin ethyl succinate, which is a type of antibiotic in here. Yeah? So ini adalah antibiotic. Next, uh, this is uh, HCTZ stands for hydrochlorothiazide. Ini kamu akan belajar dengan um, Madam Lim dalam uh, pharmacology kedua, uh, hydrochlorothiazide. So this hydrochlorothiazide is used for high blood pressure untuk tekanan darah tinggi. Lepas itu, kamu juga uh, mungkin akan encounter and S means normal cell line lah. So this is uh, garam. Okay, garam dalam bentuk solution. Uh, PCN, 
Okay, PCN stands for penicillin uba antibiotic. Uh, TPN stands for total parenteral nutrition. Total parenteral nutrition. So di mana total parenteral nutrition ini digunakan untuk patient yang dalam keadaan yang koma ataupun post operation where they need to take in the infusion back of nutrients menerusi TPN. Huh? Just to illustrate for you all, um, this slide is actually not so important for your exam that ataupun kamu punya test. So you don't really need to hafal okay, untuk slide ini. Huh? Okay, we move on to the next slide. Okay, strength. Okay, strength, it refers to kekuatan. Kekuatan ubat. So, setiap kali kan kita menggunakan nama ubat, kita mesti indicate dia punya milligram, dia punya gram. So, this strength normally we follow the drug name at the back. So, two situations or times when this may not be done. Sometimes, kalau itu ubat kan, dia datang dalam bentuk satu kekuatan saja, one strength. The doctor would normally just ignore the strength part. Okay, so sometimes kalau dalam klinik ataupun hospital, kalau ubat itu hanya ada satu kekuatan saja. Okay, just one strength saja. So sometimes the doctor would not indicate the strength lah. Tapi kalau dalam satu hospital, contohnya kita ada morphine, let's say it's uh, 10 milligram, ataupun uh, morphine, 20 milligram, ah, doktor akan tuliskan itu strength untuk bagi tahu kita bahawa ubat ini kita kena bagi 10 milligram ataupun ubat yang lain mungkin ubat, uh, morphine 20 milligram begitu. Okay, so if it's only one strength saja, doktor tidak akan bagi tahu lah. So most of the time the prescribed strength is stated. So untuk prescription yang bagus, biasanya doktor akan indicate itu prescribed strength. So, kalau kamu tidak uh, tahu apakah strength yang digunakan, it is always good to check with the pharmacist ataupun check dengan kita punya doktor lah. Just call the doctor and ask what is the strength that we need to give it to the patient. So, contact the prescriber. Okay. Jangan takut untuk check. Huh? So, jangan takut untuk check. Jangan cakap, oh, kalau saya check maksudnya saya uh, tidak pandai ataupun tidak uh, competent enough. So always check with whoever, uh, contohnya prescriber, doctor, ataupun pharmacist. Okay, next we have this uh, abbreviation also. For example, percent. Okay, so any percent. Uh, and then we have the gram, we have the international unit, IU, milligram, MG, MEQ, uh, milli equivalent, dengan U for unit. This one. Okay, this slide is important. Saya akan bagi tahu kamu manakah abbreviation yang amat penting. Eh? I'll go through with you things that you need to memorize. Basically, this slide is important. Eh? There are a lot of uh, abbreviation here yang amat uh, penting. So, for example, CAP stands for capsule. Ini penting. Eh? So, I guess all of you have learned from your pharmaceutics. Capsule kamu semua tahu lah, kan? So capsule comes with a cap and also dia punya itu badan. Okay, so di mana kamu akan letakkan itu ubat-ubat di dalam. So it comes in a capsule form. CRM, okay, important. Cream. Elixir, E-L-I-X. Penting. GTTS, ini penting. Drops, berapa drops. Uh, drops meaning uh, titik ke? ataupun titisan. So normally we use it for the eardrop ataupun eye drop begitu. MDI is important. Okay, MDI means meter dose inhaler. Biasanya ini refer kepada ubat asma. Okay, ubat asma. I'm not sure whether any one of you have seen ubat um, asma digunakan untuk patient. So it comes in a tube form, macam begitu. So, di mana, uh, ini kita punya mulut. Uh. This part is our mouth. So, kita akan menghisap itu ubat menerusi mulut kita dan masuk kepada dalam kita punya paru-paru. So, this whole thing is what we call the inhaler ataupun meter dose inhaler. 
And then we have uh, PO, important. PO means by mouth. Okay. Menerusi mulut. Contohnya, kamu telan. Kamu kunyah. Kamu, uh, apa lagi ya? Minum. Okay. So, all this is considered PO. Uh, per oral. Okay. Per oral means by mouth. Menerusi mulut. Okay. The next one is PR. PR means per rectal. Okay. Per rectal means menerusi dubur. Menerusi dubur. Per rectal. Lepas itu, SL refers to sublingual form. SL refers to sublingual form. Sublingual means di bawah lidah kita. Okay? Di bawah lidah kita. Sublingual. Lah. Sublingual. Di bawah lidah. SOL ataupun SOLN refers to solution. Lepas itu, SUPP means a suppository. Ya. Ubat suppository ini digunakan dalam dubur kita juga. Uh, SUSP, suspension. Contohnya macam Gaviscon. And then we have the syrup form, SYR, syrup form. We have the tablet, TAB. Okay, this is quite unusual. UNG, ya. UNG means uh, ointment. Okay, ointment ini dia lebih pekat, lebih berminyak daripada krim. Okay, so untuk slide ini, mana yang penting? Yang saya tick, ya, itu penting. Okay, for those that I have already ticked, it is important for you to understand, to hafal, memorize, and to sit for your exam and test. Ya. Not only for test and exam, but it's also important next time when you go to industrial training or hospital attachment. Okay, so remember this. Okay, dosing directions and abbreviation, it is a master. Kita mesti check the dose of all the drugs. Understand, right? This part here, uh, logical. Uh, sebab setiap kali kita dispense ubat, kita mestilah check itu dose lah. Jangan underdose, jangan overdose. And then the pharmacy assistant must also make certain that the patient understand how the medication is to be taken. So ini kita bagi patient uh, instruction. Kita bagi mereka instruction untuk um, makan. Okay, supaya mereka tahu macam mana makan itu ubat. And then the directions to the patient that appear on the prescription label must be written in a way that is clear and unambiguous. Lah. So unambiguous means tidak confusing. Okay, tidak confusing. Maksudnya, ubat yang kita, itu label yang kita bagi kepada patient mestilah dia clear. Okay, tidak confusing. Kalau tidak, nanti patient dia tersalah makan, lupa makan. Okay, dia confused macam mana dia terpaksa makan. Okay, generally kita punya instruction, okay, mesti merangkumi the number of dosage unit. Contohnya, one capsule, two teaspoon ataupun 15 drops. So, kita mesti bagi clear instruction kepada patient. Macam mana patient makan? Satu biji, dua biji, tiga biji, satu sudu teh, dua sudu teh, tiga sudu teh, ataupun dua titis, lima titis, sepuluh titis. Semua ini mesti dalam kita punya arahan, instruction. And then the frequency with which the medication is to be taken. Contohnya kita mesti tahu juga berapa kali setiap hari. Contohnya di sini kita ada example, three times a day, ataupun three times a day, four times a day, ataupun every four hours, setiap empat jam, setiap empat jam. Contohnya, uh, ubat antibiotik, ataupun ubat mata, okay? kita sometimes will use every four hours, every three hours, every 12 hours. So additionally, uh, clarifying instruction, contohnya after meal, ataupun with food, with meal, with water, So, certain drugs yang boleh mencetus ubat uh, masalah gastric, sakit dugal. Jadi, kita mesti bagi tahu patient untuk makan ubat itu selepas makan ataupun jangan perut kosong. Okay, so, all this must be included in your instruction. Okay, so I think this uh, for example part here is very um, self-explanatory. Contohnya, lima 
tablet. Okay, dia punya short form 5 tab lah. Caps 2, maksudnya 2 capsule. 1 GTT means 1 drop. Lepas itu dia tulis sini asterisk lah. So asterisk means how many? Okay, berapa? Okay, berapa nombor? Okay, how many? Berapa banyak? So asterisk 40, okay, asterisk 40 means maksudnya 40 tablets. Okay, so now we are going to look at one example how we can translate ataupun interpret the direction. Eh? So contohnya macam begitu. So kita ada ini. Gentamicin ophthalmic solution. Okay, so gentamicin ini actually it refers to antibiotic. Eh? Nama antibiotic. Ophthalmic solution maksudnya ubat mata. Okay, and then you see this one slash one. Eh? Ini one slash one, maksudnya one. Kalau two slash two means two lah. Kalau three slash three means three. Okay, so I hope all of you understand. Eh? So this one slash one means one. Lepas itu GTT means... Um, Drop, berapa titis. OU, nanti kita akan nampak apakah singkatan untuk OU. OU basically means to both eyes, untuk kedua-dua belah mata. And this is Q4 hours, means uh, every four hourly for five days. Lah. So this is actually one example of how we can translate the direction. Lah. Jangan risau, kita akan buat banyak exercise untuk uh, translation part. But please bear with me first. Okay. So in this slide, amat amat penting. Eh? So all of you must take note. This is an important slide here. Okay. Untuk exam, untuk test, untuk clinical placement lain kali, dan juga untuk uh, future employment. Apabila kamu kerja, kamu mesti tahu. Eh? So again, I'll tip for those yang amat penting. Basically, is everything lah. Okay. Untuk slide ini. So ATC means around the clock. Okay, dalam masa 24 jam, around the clock maksudnya. And then we have the D stands for day, berapa hari. We have the H stands for hour, jam. This is jam. We have the Q means every, setiap. So di sini kalau saya tulis Q4H ya means every four hours. So, kalau saya tulis Q6H, maksudnya every six hours. So, QD, maksudnya every day. BID ataupun BD, maksudnya twice a day. Ataupun two times a day. Dua kali setiap hari. TID means three times a day. Okay, TID means three times per day. Tiga kali setiap hari. QID ataupun QDS maksudnya four times a day. Okay, four times a day. Lepas itu kita ada HS. HS means uh, bedtime. STAT means immediately, at once. Serta merta. Okay, serta merta. So, when do we use STAT? Ha? Bilakah doktor akan bagi ubat dalam bentuk STAT? Apabila, contohnya kamu boleh visualize, when we have a patient uh, who had an accident, car accident, ha? mungkin patah tangan, pat patah kaki, datang ke hospital. Jadi, patient ini dalam kesakitan. So, he's actually in great pain. So, in this case, the doctor will order a STAT dose of paracetamol ataupun ubat morphine untuk kasih kurangkan uh, kesakitan itu. So in this case, the, the, the drug will be ordered as stats immediately. And then we have the ON means every morning, setiap pagi. ON means every night. Okay, so basically, all the short forms, semua singkatan dalam slide ini, amat, amat, amatlah 
penting. Okay, amat-amatlah penting. Okay, you may be wondering, eh, apakah maksud, okay, kenapa, apakah perbezaan QD dengan QID, kan? Jangan kamu confuse, ah. QD dengan QID. So, QD means every day, setiap hari. QID means four times a day. Okay, something to take note. Jangan kamu confuse QD dengan QID. Okay, so this is uh, one example. Consider this example. One tap Q three hour. So, kalau kamu kasih translate kan? So, it's like one tablet every three hours. Huh? So, ini dia punya rationale. One tablet every three hours. So, chart two HS means uh, take two powders at bedtime. Because HS ini kan adalah bedtime. But nowadays, ini chart kan, ini chart powder, jarang kita guna sudah. Ah, sebab kita punya dosage form, mostly it comes in tablet, syrup, uh, elixir, uh, capsule, for example. Jarang dalam bentuk powder sudah. Okay, so again, this is um, showing of different types of abbreviation, dia punya meaning dan juga dia punya Latin term. Uh, so for this slide here, okay, saya akan highlight juga lah apakah yang penting yang kamu perlu tahu untuk exam. So BID tadi kita sudah explain sudah BID is two times a day. Cap means capsule, yes, tadi kita sudah bincang. Uh, GTT means a drop, yes, kita sudah bincang. H means hour. Okay, so basically yang the rest kamu tidak perlu tahu lah actually. Okay, untuk saya punya subject ini. Okay, again, uh, some of this that you have um, seen just now, contohnya Q4 hourly, kamu tahu sudah, Q6 hourly, kamu tahu sudah. Okay, so here we have the PRN. So, apa maksud PRN? So, PRN means when necessary. Okay, ini penting. Eh? When necessary. So, when necessary means jika perlu saja. Contohnya untuk ubat Panadol, ubat sembelit, uh, maybe lactulose, okay, kalau tolong kasih relief itu constipation. So, ubat Panadol, lactulose, uh, maybe ubat Gebisco untuk sakit dugal. Sebab ubat-ubat ini kita gunakan untuk PRN saja, when necessary, jika perlu. Kalau ada sakit, baru makan. Kalau tiada sakit, tidak perlu makan. And what else that you need to know? Uh, QID, tadi kita sudah bincang. QID means four times a day. So it's four times per day. Uh, SIG, okay, ini penting juga. So SIG means uh, right on the label ataupun instruction lah. Instruction untuk patient. Okay, instruction for the patient. Right on the label, SIG. Stats, tadi kita sudah bincang juga, immediately, it refers to immediately, secepat mungkin, sebab patient dalam keadaan yang kesakitan sekarang, jadi kita kena bagi dia serta-merta. TAB tablets, uh, TID three times a day. Okay, so all this uh, that I think uh, is important for you all to know. Okay, what else that we need to know uh, for this slide here? You can see AD. Okay, kita ada AD untuk, untuk right ear. AS untuk left ear. AU untuk each ear. Okay, so right ear, left ear. Each ear means both ears lah. Kedua-dua belah telinga. Both ears. Okay, I am important. I am IM means uh, intramuscular, intramuscular. IV, intravenous. Ini penting juga. Uh, OD, OD means right eye. OS means left eye. Kalau OU means each eye or both eyes. 
Okay, PO tadi kita sudah bincang by oral, by mouth. PR means per rectal. Okay, rectally secara masuk melalui dubur. PV means through vagina. SC means subcutaneous, di bawah itu skin of the lemak. SL means sublingual, di bawah lidah. Uh, switch and speed ini maksudnya kita masukkan ubat ke dalam mulut kita, lepas itu kita berkumur dan kita kasih ludah keluar. Okay, kita berkumur, lepas itu kita kasih um, speed up, okay, meludah keluar. Maksudnya switch and speed. Huh? And then the last one, POP means topically ataupun di permukaan kulit, huh? on the skin surface. Di permukaan kulit, kita panggil topical. All right, so that uh, concludes part one of this lecture now, lecture nine. So please uh, proceed to watch uh, lecture nine, part two, subsequently.